Well, it's six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. If everybody would join me, we'll do our pledge, our flag, and then Commissioner Pat can do our invocation, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Father in heaven, we approach our throne this evening in a most humble manner. Ask your blessings upon us that we enter into this meeting. We ask you to bless us with wisdom, to use our knowledge to the best of the betterment of our community. Bless us with patience and understanding and to the betterment of our fellow man. Bless our country during this time of unrest. May peace be the forethought of most people and cool heads prevail. We ask you to bless us tonight, not only tonight, but every day that we live. Keep us from the evil one, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Welcome everybody out tonight. And we'll go ahead and get started. And first item of business is approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We'll have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Next is the bills. Make a motion we pay the bill. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. We have nothing under old business. Larry, are you going to talk about Wales after a while? Yes. Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, first item under there is a rezoning ordinance for planning and zoning. And that'll be in your packet. That's where planning and zoning met the other night on the property on North Main Street. I'm not sure the address, 1010 maybe, 1016? What's that, 1010? North Main? Hmm? 1010. Okay. And we just need to approve that recommendation from Land and Zoning to rezone that to business. I move to approve the Land and Zoning request for the chain 1010 North Main from R1 to B3. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Commissioner Crump, do you have anything to? Not right off the bat. Okay, Sandy. Um, I've got a couple of things, but I have people here that are probably going to address what I'm going to talk about. So, if you want to wait, we'll just all throw it in. As in? Um, street and sanitation. Now I've got some stuff on sanitation as well, so. Okay. Yeah, one thing I will ask, and right now, what kind of difference are you seeing? Uh, there's a huge difference. If you look on the uh, payables on the landfill services, you know, we're already, we're just into this year, a couple, three months, we're at $2,000 over budget. Yeah. Uh, with the six bag limit, it has gone back down to what I would call the normal. Uh, so it, it's catching up. Okay. And I'll probably have more questions once we get once we address get there too. But I did my idea contingency plan because we're entering a season but not going to be normal. That's true. And well, I did I called Casey's in Hartford and they do accept cardboard. So I think a lot of people have cardboard when we lost our um, recycle bins from mm -hmm. the city of Hartford, people were stuck with cardboard. And I said, okay, are there any regulations? Because I know my daughter in Louisville, they're kind of particular about the cardboard that they recycle and blah, blah, blah. He said, no, we'll take any of it. So I thought that was really good to know because I cannot stand to put a cardboard box broken down in a trash bag to take to the landfill. Can't stand that. <laughs> so that's one thing I do want us to get out if we can. I don't, hopefully it won't be considered advertising for anybody, but <laughs> if everybody take their cardboard over there, that'd probably help quite a bit. Charles? Not yet. I might, not young. You're a little early on us. <laughs> Kevin? Uh, everything went well. But everything seems to be going along smooth. Of course, I've been gone for a month, so. Yeah, we it's catching it up. It's catching <laughs> up. Rub it in. Rub it in. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not down there now. It is down there just going crazy. It looks like it's going a little crazy. Well, I will say with the parks, they did have a, a nice evening with Oldham Park on Saturday on a veterans program. I must just missed you. I was down there like, must have been right before you got there. Because I was down there, right, down there earlier in the day. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, I was, I was there, there about four. four when I was there. I got to at four. Well, we just missed you because it was right at four when mm -hmm. we got there. Yeah. I got there about 4.15. Well, that'll tell sorry. Larry? Kind of give you a well update. I met with KU down there last week. Uh, I think we're going to take the service, the electric service underground. There will be a uh, pool box and a transformer set for any future growth, any houses, anything built in the area. Uh, I think she told me it's going to be roughly $6 a, a foot. Uh, we got a supply, we got to dig the, the trench and, and lay the conduit and they come back and run the wire. Talked to Danny, and Mr. Overton, he was okay with that as well. Uh, since we're going to upsize the pump and the motor, there's going to be an additional charge for that. It's going to be $13,000. Uh, that's for the pump, the motor, and a transformer to take it from single phase to three phase. Uh, that's also the, the difference is we was budgeted a 25 gallon minute pump, what we thought we was going to have. The well is going to produce somewhere between 65 and 85 gallon a minute. So, which will reduce our dependency on the water. What? That'll just reduce our dependency on the water exactly. district. Exactly. It should it should drop us down between thirty five and forty percent. So if, uh, I guess we need that in the form of a motion to go ahead and upsize the larger that. pump and transform. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we do the different transformer and pump. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It's thirteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Different. Okay. For the difference, $13,950. <clears throat> okay, those in favor signify the time? Uh -huh. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Okay, the other thing that I have, uh, we have a couple businesses wanting to try to open up some type of small restaurant, uh, Tamberlane, one in particular. And, you know, we, we always had said we need a thousand gallon grease trap outside uh, to catch any of the, the runoff grease. Uh, we're talking to Kevin Likens, he said a lot of cities are uh, Orangeboro and Boulder are using a, using a 40, he calls it a 40 gallon, uh, pound, 40, 40 pound under the sink grease trap. And he said that when they, they have to be periodically clean because when they stop up, nothing goes through. And I asked him if he was uh, comfortable with that. He said, yes, that's what a lot of cities are putting in. So I don't, I'm not sure if we need to redo our ordinance stating that we are going to allow this or if we can just have some something documented in our minutes saying that we will allow it. Hmm. It's going to take an ordinance change, won't it? Because they know what ordinance say. I'm not sure what an ordinance says <coughs> on the size. It just, I know it just says a grease trap. I, I think we'll be fine if, if we just vote on it and have a motion on it. That way... Hmm. It depends on if it's in the ordinance or not. Change the ordinance now or add it to our ordinance? Well, we can amend the ordinance, but we'd have to have a second reading on it, which is no big deal. I mean, it's That's all that I have. So we would need to in the form of a motion if someone wanted to allow that. And you may get more details from Kevin as specifically what it is. Okay. How many places do you think will use this for you? Two right off the bat. Uh, we're, we're fixing. Our, our winter season's coming in, we're going to have a little extra time. We're fixing to do grease trap inspections. Uh, I was told there's two restaurants that don't have anything. So that's the first two we're going to visit. Now, my understanding is that this particular grease trap, once it's full, everything just shuts down. And they, it, the grease cannot go into our system. Water cannot go in, water cannot drain our sink if it's not cleaned properly. Well, that puts a little more incentive to keep it clean. Exactly. That's, that's a good, that's exactly. a good incentive. Do we need to change the ordinance, Paul? Or, you know, I didn't know I about this coming up to look at the, how the ordinance is worded, so. Uh, we go to close session, I'll grab the, my ordinance book and I'll see how it's worded. Then we can okay, can we hold off on that for a few minutes then? Okay. If it's in the ordinance, we'll have to right. change the ordinance and have to take a uh, first reading and a second reading. If it doesn't specify other than just grease rape, we can adjust. But. Do you have anything else? That's it. I've got one item. It's going to be a for a closed session item as well. So, Mike, yeah. Uh, I'll just report that our two officers, last two that we hired, uh, they had two weeks of in service to get caught up to where they're eligible to receive their CLEF money, which amounts to $1.92 an hour. Uh, so they, they just finished up two weeks in Richmond. Uh, so, both of them are done with their training. And we're all current on our training for this year. Uh, that's the only thing 
up that to record the auction stuff. Yeah. This stuff that we've done it before the COVID. We need to do something with that. Uh, whether it's take the bids we got, open them and whatever they whatever they are. Does somebody they still want it that come to get it or or reopen it? I've been aiming to ask you about that. Something. I've noticed a sign last week. I don't know why we couldn't just reopen it and make an online bid. The on well, they can still come in here Good. and do it like that. Because, like I say, it's been a while. We need to get that out. Reopen it for what month? How much longer was left on it? Do you remember? We just kind of got started, hadn't it? Yeah, it wasn't too much left. I don't think we could reopen it for a month. Okay. Gotta have it gone before Christmas. Oh, yeah, we got to have it before we. <laughs> Why? Wow, you think it's in the way? <laughs> Uh, how about? Oh, a couple weeks. I, yeah, a couple weeks. I don't need. Or the, uh, whatever y'all want to do about opening or take whatever bids we had on it and open them up and see if people still interested in it. How about if we reopen it to the 25th? That's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, then it gets the, the, the next week to get it out of there. That way, if it does get in the paper, it still gives people, it will be in the, can be in the paper two weeks and okay. the monitor. That'd be good. We just need to get rid of it. That's four lines. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> okay. David? Okay. And uh, Elisa, I will let you introduce our your new sidekick here, Miss Kersey. Cur I got the name right. Yeah. This is our new city clerk. Her name is Kersey Sharp, and she started with us last Wednesday. And she's catching on, and she's doing a great job so far. Nice to meet you all. I apologize for not introducing you right off the bat. It just kind of clicked with me. It's like, hmm. she's sitting there, and we just ignore her. Mr. Brash, you have any? I'm going to skip around. I'm going to Jay Dillon, because I know his is a separate one, and you all have been working on. So, so Jason talked to you today. Yeah, he gave me a call. About um, the gravel to, to sort of catch everybody up to speed. Did this start almost a year ago? Probably. I think the time that you were here, I was out with Strap or something yeah, like that. Probably about yeah, last year, and we talked about street down Phelps. Um, I think he pulled some funds from the discretionary from the county, and the plan was to, uh, I guess, gravel and then uh, blacktop. Um, I think it's supposed to we're supposed to gravel this fall, but um, I think maybe some issues with specifications. We needed a little bit wider. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And he just now told me that. So I think it measured maybe. 14 feet? I don't know if you all know. 13, 14, at least three or four foot. And it needs to be 17, yeah. is that right? 18. Before 18. The, 18. 18? I thought it was 17. Yeah, it needs to be 18. So it needs to be 18. And it's, before I think, what's in the ordinance. Okay. Uh, so, so Jason asked me if I could gravel that today. So I guess that, that means I need to gravel it uh, this fall and then plan on blacktop next year. Is that the plan? Or I, I, he didn't really know I had a lot of specifics on it for me, so I wasn't. When, we get, when the gravel gets put on it, we can, uh, of course, I'm assuming our sanitation truck backs down there and get your... Yeah. So that, that, that's definitely going to help the compaction. We just need to make sure we get it compacted. That way, when the black top's laid, it doesn't start breaking off. Right. So, right. Okay. And then, uh, I guess, as far as, I think it was base was uh, a couple inches of three, yeah. three, four. Is that right? Two, two, two inches of base and inch of surface. Okay. Black top. Okay. Does that answer... Your questions, and we feel like we're finally getting somewhere. Yeah, well, that's, uh, he, I didn't realize that you know I needed to widen it at all. Like I just found out about that, so that's fine. And then, uh, and I think originally he it sounded like he was going to gravel it um, with that fund. I don't know, but he asked me if I could do, which I don't mind to do, but I just didn't know as far as okay. if you all need anything else specific for me or anything like that. So. Larry, is there anything else that Jay Dillon needs to know before he gets? I think after it's black topped. Probably a question for AV or that was going to be dedicated to the city. Would that be dedicated through Jay Dillon or where would that where would the dedication come from? Repeat. The section of Phelps Avenue that is not blacktop that is going to his new uh, building site, uh, fiscal court, they're going to use some discretionary money to blacktop, then it's going to turn over to be a city street. Where does the dedication, who, who will prepare the dedication to us? 
What's the current status of it? It's right now just, I guess, considered a gravel driveway. It's, you know where it's at behind the Catholic Church? Yes. It's, it's part of that that was, I'm not sure how they did the other, that was before my time, but I'm not sure how they did the other as far as the dedication. Didn't? Well, I'm assuming Greg and Cooper took care of it, but I'm, I'm not for sure how it was done. We have not been maintaining it in any way. That section, no. And neither is the county. Correct. Well, it can come to us, it can come to us by deed, or uh, the, uh, the city, by example, could, uh, somebody could appear down here, ask that it become part of the, uh, of the city street system and, and the commission can accept it okay. uh, in, that, in that manner. Uh, be the there's going to be actual city funds expended on it? No. County funds. Right. County funds. But then the city might, will maintain it afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, that's all it's going to take. Somebody, okay. somebody asked that it be become part of the city uh, uh, street system. Okay. And, and I think accepted. when we've got that with Jay Dillon as a homeowner back in there that has asked, it was one of the, and I don't even know who technically owns the property. Uh, I've got one group telling me it still goes back to the original owners, which would be Tommy Jackson and Glenn Behrman. And is it one of those? Is it part of one of those old alleys that were never? It was a street that was never alley? dedicated. Huh? It was it was an old street they had laid out, but it was never dedicated to the city. Yeah, that's what. I yeah. Meant. Yeah. If it's never been dedicated, it's either got to be deeded or officially dedicated. And for somebody here asking it to be done, you could pass a motion accepting it. If you knew, if you've got some understanding of the length and width of it. Yeah, yeah well, we'll have that. Okay. And then that's my concern whenever he gets ready to ask us to take it in as our street. I want it to meet, since we're starting from scratch, basically, on it, I want him, it to be the specs. That it's needed to be because I don't want all this stuff to be done and then us say, well, it exactly. should have been. Exactly. <laughs> so, but I've, if we've had really good working together, it's just with COVID and everything, everything, it's kind of strung it out. Right. But, um, yeah. As long I'll, as I'll plan on getting the gravel on it probably in the next couple of weeks, so I'm able to, and that way I can start backing down with you know some of the winter weather and, and the trucks on it, and then I guess we'll see how it's looking next spring or whatever. And you can always contact me. I introduced Jay Dillon to um, White Castle when he was a young kid. I took him to the wild side of life with right. my son. We and you don't hold that against him? <laughs> no, he still digests. Yeah. yeah, we got the big suitcase. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Mr. Grant? Yes. Uh, sanitation is my... Okay. I, I have agreed to tie my sticks up in a bundle and all that. I, and I do that. I used to put them in my garbage can. I have two garbage cans. I went to Walmart, not Walmart, Sam's. Bought about a $90 garbage can, one of those heavy duty ones, to put my garbage in. All my, all my waste paper cans in the house, I line them with little Walmart bags. I imagine there's other people that do that too, but that's what we do. And when they get full, we tie them up, throw them in the garbage can. Well, two weeks ago, I was standing at the window, garbage men come out. It's on a Tuesday morning. Garbage men came in. I had a bag of garbage on the street. I had two bags of garbage in the small garbage can. Then my big garbage can was, well, the lid was actually propped up. It was plumb full. Well, they got the one off the street. They got the two out of the garbage can. That was three. Then they got three little Walmart bags and threw them in. They left my garbage can three-fourths full and drove off. And that's not right. Well, and I understand your concern on that. I have the same concern. Let me, let me just tell you a little bit about what we've had to deal with in the last month. Trying, when all this started, was it August? When we first started talking about it, we understood what was going on with the uh, amount of trash going up immensely and was going to have to do something. We've talked about different ways of doing it. We're like, okay, we can do this, we can do that. 
uh, I have a problem. Somebody just would well, just raise the rates for everybody. I'm like, well, you know, about 80% of our residents have six bags or less. So I hate to raise rates on those 80% to subsidize the other 20 who has a whole lot more. In some cases, we have as many as 20 and 25. And, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think that's wrong what happened. But the reason it's happened is because in the last month, well, let's see, we've had one person inform us that because their house is worth $260,000, I guess they think they're entitled to extra garbage pickup. Uh, I explained to someone the same thing about the elderly people on fixed incomes that have far less than six bags and other customers. The response we got was, those people are not my problem. Uh, we've had property owner pick up bags that sanitation left in excess of the six, pass the sanitation truck, set the bags off in someone else's yard, which is technically littering. What, please, okay, just because I'm getting to the next one on there. Uh, we had one, my favorite, the one resident called said they were just going to take all their excess garbage and dump it in the mayor's yard. They can deal with the mayor's wife. That's all I got to tell them. <laughs> uh, and this is one that comes down to what you're talking about. When we first set this up, we said, you know, if you get up there and it's on it, sometimes people have an extra, grab it. Or if there's a cardboard box sitting beside, grab it. We have problems with people following the garbage truck around taking videos. And somebody picked up a cardboard box just like that or an extra small bag. And the thing that goes over social media is must depend on who you know or what your last name is on whether you get picked up or not. So that's where it came down fine, six bags, until we can work all this out. And that's, that's not right, I know. But then, you know, you've got people that's going to burn their trash in the streets, people that's going to leave it on Main Street, I guess it gets overrun where somebody will finally pick it up. And I don't, I don't know, I've, I've just really been frustrated with this. I thought better of some of our citizens in this. But this is the way it is and what we're having to deal with. And we have, when we, again, when this first started, we were trying to decide what to do and didn't know what route we were going to take. And like right now, I've been working on this for the last few days, and I haven't talked to Sandy because I just finished it today. Six possible options that we can do. Uh, none of them are good. But it is something we have to, you know, something we're going to have to work through and decide what's the best way for the most people. Okay. Like I say, I agree. I, it's not right what happened. Well, I tell you what, I but, called up here. I was hot. I, when I went out there and I saw that garbage can three fourths full. I said, You mean this is going to sit here another week with the garbage in it? And of course, I had them in bags. Like, it's not loose garbage. Right, right. They were in bags. All I got to do is reach in there and throw the bag out. But I come in there and I called. I, I talked to a young lady. It might have been. I don't know who it was. I said, who's over the garbage? I want to know. Well, I could help you with that. I said, okay. I told her what happened. And she told me what to do. And that's what I'm doing. This past week, I got, I had six bags of garbage. 33-gallon bags, yeah. big black ones. And they got them. Yeah. They threw them on the back of the truck and off they went. But the thing about it is, I'm having a double bag now because I'm putting white bags in there in my 13-gallon and taking it out and putting it in my big garbage and then and then I put put all them in the big bag so I'm double handling all of it. You're one of those who keeps it under the six bag normally limit well, and, and, and is getting and is paying house. is paying the price I've for what those. six adults in my house. Me, my wife, my youngest son, and three boys, 18, 19, and 20. And we produce a lot of garbage. No. in a week's time. And that's but, been, I want us to try to come to something that's workable. And I said, if I've learned nothing else, I've learned one thing. More people use 13 gallon garbage bags than I ever dreamed of. We always <laughs> just use the big 30 when gallon thought, bags. That's what we thought, I don't mean to interrupt, but when we saw the six standard, standard mm -hmm. bags, we were just assuming, you know, and then of course, once we were able to use the 33, it got quite a bit better. I mean, I'm in a little bit of the same situation with all the adults and stuff in our house. Plus, staying home for COVID, a lot more is coming into our home, that kind of stuff, so we don't go out. So I understand, and you know, obviously, part of one of the comments you read was something that I wrote, just kind of snarky, and I apologize about putting it on Main Street. I was kind of joking, but obviously that's illegal. But here's what I was, here's the point I was trying, you know, trying to make. A couple of points. Number one, we didn't know. I didn't know this was an option to come and hang out and talk. I mean, that's just my fault for not exploring the options. And 
you need knee jerk reactions, that kind of stuff happens. But we weren't, and we, when I say we, Shelly and I, really weren't that aware of the reasons behind. I mean, yeah. I understand now that he's talking about saving landfill costs and all that kind of stuff, and 20, 25 bags of, you know, that's crazy. I mean, that's a crazy amount of bags. So the, I mean, I guess I've been thinking through it a lot, Paul, is lately. I know there's some, I know in, in Owens Brothers, they have some where they, they, they have the options of paying extra for extra amounts, but I don't know exactly how they do that logistically. So I'm sure that's one of your things that you were thinking about too, but I don't know. I don't know the best way to do it. I would just come in to, to right. kind of oh, listen sure. and hear. Um, that's an option. And, and we also heard the option of taking stuff to the free dump on the dump day, you know, free dump day. We, you know, I don't have a truck, you know, that kind of stuff. It, it, it gets hard for a lot of folks, you know, especially that you can't transport everything. So we were just trying to figure sure. out and think about the best way to get it taken care of. Well, and, and like I said, our whole plan was to try to just to work through this. But I said, when you start having videos show up, and it's like, well, it depends right. on who you are. And, and then Kenny's one who gets, um, sorry. <laughs> well, what I don't understand I don't, is they were talking about cardboard. Why is our recycling bins at Casey? It's a private business. They yeah, take, I they'll mean, take well, I mean, why did, did, did we sell a tool to scrap them out? Yeah, or did. do they not? No, they not we've never, we, 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 but, but we, they were not ours. Those belonged to the city of Hartford. Yeah. When the city had a recycling program for several years, and those belonged, they called us, they were trying to up their volume to keep it in the black, and they put, I know they put one here in Cromwell and Fort Lake, several around the county. But then at one time under one of the new administrations, Hartford got out of the recycling business altogether, pulled the, because they were losing a substantial amount of money every year on the recycling program. And they pulled all the, the bins that were scattered throughout the county. But that was the city we're of Hartford. We're just trying to figure out a way we can help you help us. I, I understand, and that's what I'm glad y'all are here, because I... I've thought more about trash than I ever thought I would think about trash. <laughs> you, never, you never think about it when it's going well. Like, of, of options, like, oh, I yeah. Think about it. We well, said something about COVID a while ago. I think that's one of the reasons we got such an uptick in garbage. No. People it, were bored, it, and all of a sudden they started cleaning their house up. Kevin, <laughs> it's, it started before COVID. It did start before COVID, but it, I think it was really bad there during that COVID rush when everybody was sitting at home. What, what do you think some of the reasons behind the uptick in, I mean, I'm just wondering about root causes here. Uh, well, one question I had, has, has, has that changed the places, the homes that were having 20, 25 bags? Some it has. I mean, some of the things that are going on is you have you have multiple adults living in one house. You have multiple families living in, in houses. You know, some on the back, the back end here, you know, there may be three families living in one place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they, if they produce six per family, then, you know, they have 18 bags right off the bat. And what, what has happened in those situations? I'm assuming that they are taking it onto the landfill. They're... A lot of them, some of them, are non-English speaking. So or you could go down Wayne Street. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 hard. I down mean, where? we're talking forty and fifty bags just piled up everywhere. Down where? Wayne Street. Williams. Uh, as soon as you turn off, is that sixty-two or something? Yeah, sixty-two mm -hmm. or fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right here, that one little section. Where there's like thirty trailer or mm -hmm. uh, twenty trailers and apartments and everything. Code enforcement. Oh, just has to deal with it, and, and, and I hate doing that. That's the sad part too. But it, and it might it, be a question of whose trash is it, because you've got those apartments back there, and then there's several mobile homes. Because it destroys property value. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, all of us, our biggest value is our home. Mm, absolutely. And you know, I mean, let's keep Ohio County clean and nice and everything. I'm agree with that 100. Run into this, I mean, I don't see any that. Body out giving hey, when I was in Lexington, if your grass got over six inches, you either mowed it or they mowed you and sent you a bill. It was just that easy. I mean, it was just, I mean, that's just all part of it. You'd be surprised how many citations or notice of violations go out every week. <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, I, yeah. I, mean, I didn't know if anybody no, did. Yeah, yeah. We that's did. just like coming in, and I mean, I ain't being hateful on a business or anything. You know, coming into Ohio County, what do we got right here by the driveway? You know, you figure that would be. Taking barricaded off just like battle ways. It's not in the city limits. So, uh, well, y'all annexed that in for drinking, didn't you? That, that, that property's not in the city limits. Not that part. The highway is. The highway is. 
But y'all, I thought y'all went all the way to the. Starts at what is it? Starts at the truck stop, doesn't it? Well, but 231 is in the city limits, but, but the, the property is not. But the property's on the side or not? That's the way the state law works. So on in other words, they got the business for their taxes, pretty much. I guess how it works. It's already. it's all out in the county property. The only thing in the city limits is 231. Out to the where the parkway's at, and all the businesses out there are in the city limits. Yes. I was just I was just going to throw out another option. I mean, if that's okay. Sure. Would there be Would it be possible that if a family had more than six bags and they needed another pickup, they could call and pay for that to come and happen? And, and that's one of the options. And like I said, I was going to give a, hand this off to Sandy Nice, and since she is commissioner over the sanitation. But because I've talked to some other communities through our KLC organization, I, and, and I'm just going to real quick. Uh, the number one thing most people, most cities are doing is just a uniform totes yes. basically provided by the city. They either, the cities either turn around and sell them to the landowners or charge a deposit for it. I just kind of ran some numbers to buy the totes for ours. We're talking over $176,000. And you're looking at a deposit, uh, the small totes can be about $90 and then a big totes $125. Scott County had us buy our homes, but buy our own that had to be a certain dimension. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we were with that cost came with us. Yeah. Condition. Well, we were we were looking at this route, so they would all be uniform. So they'd all be uniform yeah. is what we were trying to do. Uh, and then, if someone wanted a small tote, that's fine. If they wanted a big tote, that's fine. If they wanted two big totes, that's fine. But they realize it's going to be, a, a, you know, exponentially every month the charge on that. Uh, a pro, the pros of that is, everybody's wanting the larger quantities, you know, they know ahead of time they've got it. The con is, like I say, the initial cost, $176,000 that somebody has to come up with. Uh, we've looked at a higher charge for customers who feel like they normally have more than the six bags. And they can come up and say, okay, we normally do. The contract and all be walked up, worked up just like we've got our current one now. And they know ahead of time. But the problem we run into that, it's going to be one of those things if you do it, you're going to get charged for it even if you turn up with four bags in one week because so we turn up with four one week and eight the next. Yeah, it's one of those things we, you, we know ahead of time you're going to get charged extra every month. Uh, and again, it comes back to having, we've got three people in the sanitation truck and they don't have time. It's going to take loads of time, not to mention effort and stuff. And I don't mean effort as far as work, but right. to keep up with, okay, this house had this one, this house had that one. And believe it or not, people will not be untruthful with you because we've had calls. Again, Larry's trying to give people the benefit of the doubt in October. We get a call. It's like, well, I only had six bags out there and they only picked up five. So we send the truck back to get the one and go out there and there's six more out there to be picked up. And that's happened on more than one occasion. Oh, I, I and again, my window early in the morning on garbage day and I have seen on numerous times a car whipping our culprit sack there. In dump garbage. Open the trunk, two big bags of garbage. You know, maybe they've only got one bag sitting out there. And then they yeah. have a couple more bags and off they yeah, go. We talked about that. That's happened yeah. in a lot of places. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. There's nice. a lot of people bring garbage from out of And if somebody would help us yeah, I, and I'm not somebody. I tell you what, you, can, there, you give us a license again, number. I can read the license <laughs> number. I'll give you the license Absolutely, number. Absolutely, because that's what we think that's happening some too. It is happening. I've seen it. I, I have, you're the first person I've heard confirm that, but we've always yeah, thought we've that. Talked about it before. I, I have seen it. I heard that too, but I didn't see it. Uh, well, I know on I Jump Day, I've seen actual pickups come in and just start unloading in the middle, and I know they're not people I even knew that I knew didn't live in Beaverdam, but they were leaving their Jump for Jump Day here. And they didn't. They don't even live in Big Red. That's considered littering, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. It sure is. Didn't they have a minimum of a five hundred dollar fine? I'd have to look. I don't know because that's state. I think it is. It is. If I get a license but, number, I'll, I'll I'll give you a call. This gentleman back here can take care of that. I think that that what second option you read sounds like a good to. And. Well, I'm not worried about getting the fine. I'm just worried about yeah. stopping the people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, we talked about that right there. Another option is just, and again, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm, this is options that I've gotten from other communities. Uh, drop the pickup altogether. Sell the sanitation truck. Of course, Saves a little bit of money, the city a little bit of money, but the con is that I hate to 
lay off people. Uh, if people cost their job, and then you get the situation where everybody would have to go with a private carrier. Uh, there's not enough around to take care of all of it. It's going to take a little while, and then we're going to have the problem with the people, unlike you all, who's not going to get a private carrier, and then we're going to have code enforcement dealing with it all the time. Do we have other private carriers available in Hall County? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they do limit, too. Private carriers do. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, that's probably not unusual, I would say. I mean, I just don't yeah. know how to... Uh, you know, we could raise the rates on all the customers, and this is one I really have a problem with. Like I say, with 80% of our households doing the six bags or less, I just hate to raise the rates, especially when I know we do have a lot of the uh, elderly, you know, fixed incomes and stuff. Well, I have had six bags because they missed the week before. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, the six bags worked for me. I mean, you know, I had to go to a 33 gallon, but I'm not here for sanitation tonight. I'm here about a light. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I would have got you before we started the sanitation. <laughs> I'd have known that. I do have a question for you, though. What did the lady, your neighbor, that you came, everything worked out okay? She just, she just went to a bigger bag. You know, that's that's all she did. You know, I mean, she's got the bag in the garbage can. She's got it open. She puts the small bags in there, zip ties it before they come, because if it's if it's not zip tied, I mean, if it's not tied, mm -hmm. they'll grab six bags out of it and go. It yeah. is what it is. Well, you know, like I told her, I said, just take it tight. I knew she was concerned about her being able to get it to the street. Oh, she, the cans at the street. So, I mean, she's really close to this place. <laughs> so, I mean, we worked it okay. out. But, I mean, it was just the aggravation, you know. I mean, oh. it, it, you know, when I got to call, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. I know. So, I, mean, you know so I would have been the same way. Just like, I was thought you got to be kidding when we start hearing they were having 20, 25 bags of garbage at people's houses. It just blew my mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't imagine. I mean... Uh, and there's there's leftovers everywhere because you know the six bag. Yeah. So well, that's something we can start working on getting that cleaned up. Right. But now my question was, are they ever going to put a light at the Ocean Road for a turn? <laughs> hey, it's terrible. <laughs> my God. Right? The last time, yeah, the last time I talked, you talking about a left turn? Yeah. From northbound. Yeah. Last because I had to go through there every day. If I don't back up and go through Fourth Street just to keep from fighting it. The last time I talked to the state, the lady who stayed, Denitra, was she was in my office in January. Of course, COVID messed everything up. And I asked her about it. And, and, and to her defense, she's like, I know this is not going to be something you want to hear, and I know this is kind of crazy, but I'm tied. Her hands are tied by what? They do traffic studies there, and there is not enough traffic there to justify the left turn signal. And I asked her how, okay, I said, how is it determined? And she said, well, they do a traffic count on an average based on a 24-hour period. Well, I'm like, well, no, 2 a.m., you don't need a left turn signal there. And, of course, I'm, I, sometimes I say stuff that I probably shouldn't say in a way I may not should say it, but she and I are friends anyway. It's just we've worked together, and she understood where I was coming from, frustration more than anything else. And I'm like, you know, they, with the technology today, I've seen it in other places, even if the left turn signal works from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., after that, I don't care. I mean, you know, the traffic's lighting up. It doesn't matter. Well, there's some streets that... From certain hours, you can go, go the other way and turn on this yeah. Lexington the same way. Busiest yeah. turns right there. I mean, busier than down here. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. lived off of Goshen Road or on Goshen Road <clears throat> almost my entire life. I never go up to that light and take a left. I'll go to at First Street. Um, when I leave in the morning, I go out to Goshen up to to take a left out of. It, or I'll turn on 3rd or 4th, and sometimes I turn on 9th or 10th, my old stomping grounds over there, and cut through the streets. Because we make the left turn depending on, okay, 2nd Street, I can turn, we do. locals, we know. All if traffic's that. coming, we wait a 3rd. <laughs> if traffic's coming, we'll go to 4th and, yeah. and just try to turn in. But that's, but that's the answer I get. Because I've asked for the same thing on 1st on Street about the left turn signal coming northbound. Right. The only time you get a green one right there is right before trains. Coming. That's, and of course, she told me that was to make sure to get traffic out of the way for a, for the so gates to close. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just heard it would be city. No, it's all because that's a federal highway, and the state's got jurisdiction over that altogether. And we even requested, I requested another light at Third Street for no other reason to help the fire department out, and they just. Looked at me, it's like, nah, too close to the other one, and we don't justify, have the traffic to justify it. Again, on that 24-hour basis. In the afternoons when I pull out of 62, I work at Beaverdam Elementary. If I pull out and the traffic's pretty bad, I'd either turn at 10th Street or 9th Street, depending on how bad the traffic is. 
and just try to bypass that area all together, which I enjoy going through my old neighborhood looking around, but it is. It's always, mm -hmm. always been like that. As long as I've, I'm 57, as long as I can remember, it's been like that. But we will ask again because I'm not above it. I'll just I'll call her back and say, "Hey, we, I'm getting requests from residents now." <laughs> we need it. Well, we, if we've had requests. Oh yeah, we've had them. I've got one more thing to bring up. Yes, sir. It has to do with drainage. And you've been there a number of times. We got in that gas line one time over there, but right there at that corner, right there, before it turns and goes down, the water has to rise. 10 inches before it even starts flowing in that ditch. And it's right there in that corner. And you, you can visualize it even when it's not full of water. You can see that it's elevated there. And water's not going to go out until it builds up about 10 inches in that ditch before it starts moving. So when you turn and into it, It's not miles. a big thing. Uh, probably one scoop with the back hole, but what scares me is that gas line. And I know it's in there somewhere. We'll, we'll call and get a line, line located on it, and then we'll see what we can do with it. Is it when you turn into Twin Hills? Queens Court. Queens, 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 Queens Court. Into your right there, Queens Court. Yeah. yeah. And, and if nothing else, take a, you know, we can take a shovel, and 10 or 15 shovels with a spade to get the water moving. I would do it myself, but it's not my property, so I'm not going to do it. Locates is it still 48 hours? Yeah, they're over about every day though. Okay. Same thing. Other than that, that's all I've got, guys. <laughs> Are there other options on there, Paul, that you wanted to share? Well, the only other option was like say raise rates on our customers or just leave the current in place. And I'm going to turn that over to you. Thank you so <laughs> much. Well, I think I think those are those are good options to kind of go through. Those are things that I kind of understood from folks in Owensboro, you know, we were mm -hmm. talking and that kind of well, stuff. So, so I appreciate that. I, I hope that this is something that can continue to be thought through. And well, obviously we are, you said the contingency plan earlier, but we're coming up on a pretty busy season. Well, and I was going to say in most everything, I think one of my gets sped out of here and just was starting to run out of room, but we talked about when we put this in place, you know, the garbage, the trash pickup the week after Christmas is going to be thrown, but well, that's null and void. That's, we're going to take what's out there because okay. that's, Again, that's an, that's not an everyday thing. That's an occasional thing, and you, you exactly. work with you. Exactly. You work with your residents. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're trying to, and we was even when we talked about it one time was going to, you know, as, of course it takes time to get the word out, but, uh, you know, if you got something going on, unusual, a phone call, it's like, hey, can you help us out? We got something. We don't mind, and that was the whole plan to try to work with little stuff, and everything was going good till the video camera started coming out, and that's. Yeah. Well, I'm not done. No, no, I didn't know you had done any of this. I'm going to be honest with you. Cause well, I, mean, I, I posted something about, hey, you know, they didn't take it. And I was like, well, anyway, it blew up, just so you know, like 90 shares, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, man, I didn't realize this was going to happen. I didn't know what I was doing when I did it in the first place. It hit, you know, hit a nerve. So I'm going to go to the city council, you know, the next meeting and try to sure. just kind of hear and learn and then maybe offer. That's why I offered a couple of thoughts, solutions, because I... I was trying to get some ideas and some answers, especially after it did what it did. Well, I did not know, and I apologize to the council because that's not my that wasn't my intention in the first place. Well, but. when we first started talking about this, like say in August, and then in September, we talked about different ways. And this is the way we went first because we were trying to not change rates, and and I know we've checked on how many bags other communities were doing. That's where the six with the thirty three kind of came up from, mm -hmm. and like say about eighty percent of our residents fit under that so we I think we did pretty well with that number well I definitely think that you shouldn't raise everybody's rates just because of that I mean obviously everybody's under that yeah well but then we but then it gets and that's why I say it's going to have, it'll have to be one of those things if somebody comes in and says hey we want to do the extra one it's going to have to be an all or none because I can hear it now it's like well every week if somebody's got an extra we'll mark it down and we'll charge them for it and then they're going to come up and it's like oh I didn't have six I didn't have more than six and we get that kind of stuff every day, so I wonder, you can't take you, pictures of every house. So if you could, if you could pay a yearly fee to have the extra, so if one week you have less, and the next week you have more, but you have a different type of tote in your yard, that way the sanitation folks would know, hey, these folks have paid the extra; they could, you know, they can have more. I don't well, know. I'm just throwing but, things out there. And and we're open to anything. Yeah. Then you get into having to have totes that 
all look alike and who's going to pay for them and where they're going to come from. Well, and, yeah, I mean, and, I guess that's true. I wonder, maybe stickers, but then people would figure it out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're, they're sneaky. People are sneaky. So. Uh, and like we said, when we you, all do this, you all do this all the time. Or, I mean, you know what people would do and what they won't do and what's best. And I trust that you guys can come up with a, a good, you know, a good well, solution. One city I talked to, they did. They went into one of these companies and bought all the totes that look alike. I think they got an orange. But then they had some. They had a decal printed up. Of course, they've got a copyright on it. With like in our case, Beaver Dam Sanitation and a logo or something that they attached to each one that comes from the city. So no one can go out there and buy an orange can right. can and stick it up there because they'd have to be able to get a decal somehow. Uh, that's just one. But but again, that's just. That's just a lot, though. and then we're going to turn around and bring all that back from the residents, and I just that's just money. I hate to I hate to do that. That's when we first discussed this in August, and then it was on the water bills. We expected the room to be full in September, and we were prepared for to stay here for and and no one, no one, no one, because we were like, okay. Well, that, and that goes back to we didn't. I mean, we didn't. Shelly and I didn't know, and we were informed, obviously, of when everything is, but we didn't know, and I think Shelly called. And one of the nice ladies helped her out and told her and stuff. So. And, and anybody, you know, y'all are welcome. It's Terry really, it's real Terry exciting Terry. sometimes. I'm sorry. So. Terry called me out too. Oh. <laughs> Not really, but a little. I can't imagine. I, I, I ended up texting her and I was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> it was fun. That's sometimes that's how you get things make, Any, good, are we, are we make gonna, good trouble. Sometimes we, that's how you get things done. How would we understand what's going to come out of it? Like, are we are we going to hear what happens? I mean, are we going to need to come each time we all meet? I mean, what what kind of communication will we get? Based Typically, on? communication is done on water bills, but I don't know for sure. The water bill we have was and October and we can do something on on social media. I, I hate doing that because there's a lot of people only there because there's a lot of people that don't have social media. The monitor is very good about any time we send them something, putting stuff up, and they do a blurb enough, I think, with anybody. So, so is it the Beaver Dam City Facebook page? Yeah, Beaver, we have a city Facebook page. I know you have a tourism. Is there a different There's, one? Yeah, we've got three, tourism, amphitheater, and Beaver Dam that, City. And that's just my ignorance not knowing. So mm -hmm. we can obviously make sure to check on that if there's any. Like if you all come up with one of those solutions or one of those, hey, you can pay a fee for the year and, you know, that kind of thing. We, it will we'll, just be differentiating who did who didn't. We'll probably do it, still do it set up monthly, just because if somebody moves in or out, and it's just yeah. a whole lot easier then you to, 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 to ride it in with the, the garbage pickup. I never want to move. So <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> and I haven't thrown this to, uh, <laughs> Kersey's kind of new, I haven't thrown at her, said, I'll figure this out. And I'm afraid of Amy, so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got afraid of this one yet. <laughs> I'm sure time's coming. Yeah, Amy's not here to defend herself. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have anything else? We, I do know we have two items in closed session we have to discuss, but um, we'll make sure we get everything covered before we. Thank okay. you all. We do very much. You all coming and for coming. Like, like we've said, we want to try to work, get a, a workable solution. We'll for be we'll be back December fourteenth. Well, Sandy be running that meeting. I will not be here. I was going to say, will I be here? <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Okay. Yeah. We have a motion and a second to go back in open session. And uh, we did have a closed session for personnel issue. And there was no action taken. So yeah, I will entertain a motion to. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>